Hello, I'm Robin Henning, and welcome to another Exchange Life Nugget of Truth. Have any of you ever struggled with unbelief? Believe it or not, it's one of my most frequent battles. I hate to admit it, but it's true. You know, anytime we get caught staring at the waves, unbelief that Jesus has us is likely going to take over. We're going to see the storm, and we're going to be like, whoa, you know, where's God in all this? Save me. This, there seemed to be a very active strategy deployed by the enemy this past week. I heard from multiple people, multiple testimonies, the same kind of attack unleashed on them, was unleashed on me, unfortunately, very successfully. And it was no fun to go through. And the enemy, he used my Achilles heel. And he, he knows where to go to shake me. And he got a hold of my Achilles and he, he shook me really good. He was latched on tenaciously. And he took me for quite a ride in a very downward spiral very quickly. You know, he had successfully gotten me to shift my mindset from abundance, who I have in, what I have in Jesus and, and vertical focus on him to a horizontal focus, which added up to lack, 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 scarcity. And all I saw was the different circumstances that had me freaked out and fear took over. In my mind, the thoughts went very dark very quickly. Now, I am very thankful for those who intercede for me on a regular basis. And I got a hold of a few of them and asked them to pray and was telling them some of what I'm really struggling with. And I'm very grateful for a, a brother who I work very closely with who graciously reminded me of who I really am in Christ, the real me. And so after a conversation with him, I met with the Lord and I asked him where the enemy had the legal right to come against me. And he showed me. Uh, he took me back to some tentacle roots down to my youth of where I had unwittingly um, surrendered to some vows, a vows of unbelief, not necessarily I will never because I'm defiant, but unbelief of this is never going to happen for me. This is never going to work for me. This can never work. And, and some of it, you know, had started in my youth and some of it happened, you know, when I was considering ministry. And, you know, so those things were uprooted. And the Lord showed me where the enemy had that, that hold, that legal standing in my life from which to attack me. And, you know, we were able to work through that using some journey tools concepts and, you know, confess, renounce, exchange the, the, the lie for truth and repartner with the Lord who is my husband and who is the one who meets my needs. So thankfully, once I made that exchange with him and, and that declaration, my joy was restored very quickly. Um, but beloved, the enemy is always seeking to shift our focus away from Jesus, that vertical, all that I have to do is rest and receive, to the horizontal, hooking into people, you're my need meter, you're the person in my life, or, or my job, or my bank account, or circumstances. This is where I, my security comes in, and who's president, who's what's going on in our culture, you name it. All these different things where the enemy is trying to get us off focus and to shift from the abundance that we have in Christ to the scarcity that's out here when we start looking out here. And so he wants to take us um, to that, a lot like with the psalmist, you know, that pit of despair. Why, why is my soul downcast? You know, and, and, and instead, the Lord wants us to look up to the mountains. This is why it's always talking about looking up to the mountains. God is up, the vertical, um, where His presence is. You know, I'll look to the mountains from whence my help comes from. You know, my help is from the Lord, the maker of heaven and the earth. And so, beloved, the, the battle, the most of the spiritual battle that we go through, and spiritual warfare, um, is taking place right here, between our ears, in our thinking. This is why we're told to take our thoughts captive and bring them under obedience. Why we're told to set our mind on what's true, right, honorable, pure, and lovely, of good repute, and then the God of peace will be with you. Test your thoughts, beloved. Use your emotions as an anchor. You feel in despair? Ah, where are you setting your mind? What's your focus on? Are you believing God to be who He says He is? He is the I am, and you can complete that statement. I am your promise keeper. I am your sanctifier. I am your husband. I am your need meter. I am your jealous lover. I am the one who protects you, is in the shield about you, the one who defends you. Instead, you're like, but the storm, the waves. And he's like, no, 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 look up. Look up. 
Cry out, look out, walk in faith, not in fear. Fear is one of the most is the most common strategy the enemy will deploy because when we're functioning in fear, we're not functioning in faith. Fear behind all fear is unbelief. And that again is one of my biggest struggles. Do I believe God is who he says he is and do I believe he really loves me? Does he really love me? Is he really count someone I can count on? And beloved, let, let's not give in to that tactic the enemy wants to deploy in our lives. The object of our faith has to and always will be the Lord Jesus Christ. People fail us all the time. And sometimes they fail us without even intending to. But Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is forever faithful. He is the ultimate in reliability. Now unto him who is able to do and willing to do exceedingly abundantly beyond all that we ask for or even can think of or can conceive. To him be the glory. Amen. I hope this encourages you. I hope you have a blessed week in Jesus. Stay focused on him.